Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today, I have a score to settle. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, in my opinion, the chicken came first. Why? Every creature was created to bring forth of their kind. The egg is a part of the process of the attempt to bring forth the same kind of chickens. Hence, I think the score is settled. Today, we're going to look at sperms and eggs. Well, not chicken eggs, but human eggs. Sperms and eggs are produced by meiosis. Sperms and eggs are called gametes. They can also be called sex cells or reproductive cells. For the sperm cells, they are called spermatozoa. The singular form, it is called spermatozoon. For the egg cell, egg cells, they are called ova. For the singular form, it is called ovum. Eggs are very unique structures found in the body of females. Surrounding the egg, you have some very important cells. They are called the follicular cells. Surrounding these follicular cells, you have a very important structure known as the corona radiata. Going inwards, the major protective layer, which is called the zona pellucida. Like regular cells, there will be a cell membrane, there will be a cytoplasm, and a nucleus. The nucleus is said to be haploid because it contains half the number of chromosomes compared to regular body cells. In the case of human beings, there will be only 23. Let's look at some unique facts about egg cells. Egg cells are produced by a process called oogenesis. Eggs are produced in the ovaries. The ovaries produce these eggs when they are stimulated by an, enzyme, by an hormone known as FSH. FSH is the abbreviation for follicle stimulating hormones. FSH is produced by the anterior pituitary gland that is located in the brain. Under normal circumstances, only one egg is being produced per month or an average of every 28 days. An egg can live for approximately three to four days after ovulation. An egg cannot move on its own. However, its movement is aided by cilia that are located in the oviduct, otherwise called the fallopian tube. In the follicular stage, which means the immature stage of the egg, they will secrete estrogen. Estrogen is responsible to bring about secondary sexual characteristics in females. These characteristics will include the development of mammary glands, otherwise called the breast. It will also stimulate the growth of pubic hair and the widening of hips. The remaining portion of the egg after ovulation is called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is responsible to secrete progesterone. Progesterone in turn is responsible to maintain pregnancy and also to thicken the walls of the uterus. Now let's look at the sperm cell. The sperm cell contains a head. The head contains a very important structure called the acrosome. The acrosome is a layer where, where enzymes are secreted and stored. We have a nucleus like the egg cell. The nucleus in the sperm cell is also haploid, which means it contains only 23 chromosomes in the case of human beings, half the number compared to the regular body cells. There is a midpiece. The midpiece contains mitochondria. Mitochondria, they are responsible for the production of energy needed to aid in the swimming process. 
there is a tail. The tail is also called the flagellum. When it is propelled, it will bring about movement or swimming of the sperm. Now let's look at some fun facts about the sperm cells. Sperm cells are produced by a process called spermatogenesis. They are produced in the seminiferous tubules in the testes. They are produced by the millions every day. They live for approximately two to three days inside of a female's body after ejaculation, which means if ejaculation occurs and there is no egg, if an egg becomes available after two to three days, the female can still become pregnant. The sperm, which can move on their own, it does this by the movement of the flagellum and is assisted by the seminal fluids. Seminal fluids are produced by accessory glands. These accessory glands are called seminal vesicle, prostate gland, and the corpus gland. The corpus gland is also called the bulbourethral gland. The head of the sperm contains enzymes that are produced in the acrosome. The head contains haploid nucleus, half the number of chromosomes. The midpiece is where you find a lot of mitochondria needed for energy production. Now let's look at some differences between the egg and sperm cell. The sperm is much smaller compared to the egg cell. The sperm is motile, which means it can move on its own. However, the egg cell is immotile. The sperm cell contains less mitochondria comparing to the egg cell. Reason being, the, when the nucleus of the sperm fuses with the egg cell, it will form a zygote. After the zygote is formed, after fertilization, there will be a rapid process of cell division to form the embryo. This rapid process of cell division will require a lot of energy, hence the need for more mitochondria. Inside of the sperm, it can be either or two of one of two chromosome, either X or Y chromosome in each sperm cell. However, in the egg cell, there can only be X chromosome. So the difference between egg and sperm, eggs, the sperm cell, the sperm cells can have a possibility of X or, X or a Y, but all the eggs will only have X chromosome. The sperm cell contains enzymes that can digest through the wall of the egg. However, the egg cell will only allow one sperm to digest through the wall and cause fertilization. The, the mechanism of the egg cell will only allow eggs, of, only allow sperms of the same species to digest through its wall. Now we are at the end of the lesson and I hope to see you in the next lesson.